Right, TRVL. Um, I'll just send this to you, David. Oh, that's a really strong, powerful, bullish close yesterday on TRVL. Much more bullish than <laughs> Bitcoin, dare I say. Let me show you. I'll, I'll compare them so you guys can see the difference. Let me just minimize those fixed ranges. Bitcoin on the right, TRVL on the left. I'm looking at the daily time frame. And similar, but I'm basically comparing the price action you see here. This is the same. Just let's go to the 25th of January from that candle. This is the same time frame, and you can see from the low here to the current price, that's a 68% increase in value. And from the low here to the current price, that's a 133% increase in value. So TRVL has increased in value, but actually what I'm seeing is a very similar price action between TRVL and Bitcoin. TRVL is more kind of volatile, obviously, you can see that, but in, a, in essence, we're doing the same thing. Now, the current yesterday BTC's daily time frame candle was this green candle. This is a bullish candle. It was a bullish candle because it closed above 50% above the previous candle body. It's very hard to see, but it's there. Let me show you quickly. You see that? See the 50% mark? That's 0 0.5. The, the the candle closed above the 50% 50, 50 mark of the, the previous, previous candle body. That's a bullish close. Okay. So we have a bullish close on Bitcoin. And this is a bullish, even more bullish close. So while this on Bitcoin is a bullish close because we closed above 50%, this is an even stronger bullish close because we... We basically reverse the candle body and we, we closed above the body into the wick. Effectively, with TRVL, the price is now in this wick. And if you look at the price action, you'll see that we've been in the wick of this candle for a while now. Okay, that's really what's happening now. The price is back in the wick. <laughs> that's a really simple way of looking at the price action without really going into too much de depth as to the why. You can see that there was a wick from here before. I mean, this potentially there. And we're back, we're in that wick now. We're in that wick from the previous candle here. And that's the same, it kind of corresponds with this candle here, okay? Now the price is in the wick. And then the candle which closed yesterday was a really bullish candle because it reversed this red candle, closed above the daily level which was formed. There was a daily level that was formed here. Okay, let me show you. Right there. That's not an untapped daily level. That's a previous 
daily level which is we've closed above so naturally it could offer a little bit of resistance in the highs but we have some a couple of tap, untapped daily levels down here and those are our next liquidity levels if we do venture down then we have some support levels underneath us where the price could find support and then if you look at the price action going all the way back we have unlimited amounts of untapped liquidity every single time the price reverses and forms a, bot, a square at the lows we have an untapped liquidity level and so if you look at the daily levels all the way through to the lows of 2.2 cents you'll see how many liquidity levels have been formed on the way up in this move okay and none of those liquidity levels have been tapped so every single one of those levels will act as support if the price was to pull back. And that I think that's why the price has been by it being bought up so vigorously, because everyone can see that we're just moving up and we're creating all of this these liquidity levels in the structure that's forming below us. It's very powerful bullish formation of candles and structure at the moment. Okay, I will chuck all of those into my daily levels. Do I have it? Yes. There it goes. The three day candle closed yesterday. Nice, uh, very powerful close continuation now we have to see how the price acts in the next few days do we get a little bit of pullback to test to test the lows of this candle or continuation no one can predict that um i think we're still on track to complete my um wyckoff analysis <laughs> and my adam and eve analysis you see that i think we're on track still Clearly, this uh, lower point of support is a good place to enter if the price pulls back. That's kind of, that would be a really good place to buy if the price was to pull back. And potentially you have a continuation of some kind of trend line like that. It doesn't necessarily, the price doesn't necessarily have to go up in a straight line. it could consolidate for a little bit before it decides what to do and we just have to see what it does um i do i do i am expecting a little bit of an sos and i think that could coincide with the two documents that are being launched the government stock governance document which might be launched tomorrow and also the tokenomics document which will subsequently be launched next week hopefully that's kind of what i'm imagining so there is some bullish news on the horizon and let's just see how the price reacts to that i'm seeing um hidden bullish divergences on the macd on the local time frame you see how the price is kind of going sideways and how the MACD is, is slowly dropping like that. Very slight, I think, to write home about. And let me have a look at the high uh, medium time frame. You see there was some bullish divergences here before the price expanded. You had higher lows you had flat lows, almost lower lows. So this is hidden bullish divergences in the four hour time frame at the lows. So that's just telling me that the price is being absorbed as people sell. You can see it more clearly here. That was going up and this is going down. The MACD is going down, yeah? So this is something to bear in mind. As the price gets, forms dips, there is some quite significant absorption which is absorbing the price 
Yeah, this three-day candle uh, CCI, I, I explained this a few days ago. It's broken out from this from this pattern to the upside. You can see that in the CCI. That's something interesting. Potentially, you could, we could potentially form some kind of bearish divergence in this higher time frame MACD. At the moment, there's no divergences. It's very on on in sync but what we want is as the price does go up to make a higher high here on the price we do also want the macd to make a higher high here so there's no divergence so we have to keep an eye on that because if you get a higher high on price and a lower high on the macd then that's quite bearish um so we what we want is when the price does get bought up to get into these higher numbers we need the price to go up with volume and that's really what this would indicate if we go up without volume then the price will be in the highs here and the macd won't be so you'll start seeing some divergences to which are bearish so we have to keep an eye on this i can see it could form um okay on that monthly time frame last month, I was talking about this, this zero line reject and see that it's clearly playing out. And now we're potentially because the, the, the CCI is a leading indicator, we're potentially crossing the hundred. I think that's the first time in the history of this token that the CCI on the monthly time frame has crossed into a hundred. I mean, we can't see the data from the launch. But if you look at the CCI in the monthly time frame, this is the first time that we're crossing into the 100. Uh, that's a really strong, powerful signal, bullish signal. It's definitely something to pay attention to on the monthly time frame, on the higher time frame. Good morning, Craig. How are you? Good morning. Welcome. A veg food lover. <laughs> Gary, oh my God. Pump yesterday. Breakout going, taking new entry, thinking of holding for a long time. What's your thoughts on Gary? <laughs> Gary, Gary, Gary. Gary didn't pump yesterday. It pulled back yesterday. I had a look. All right. I think this is looking really nice. I can't. I, can't. I mean, look at it. It's beautiful, right? <laughs> it's looking good. I'm going to say it's beautiful, and then someone is going to say to me, you have no idea what you're talking about. You're an idiot. So, whatever. We're almost there. It's Adam and Eve. And the great thing about an Adam and Eve is if it doesn't pan out, if we can't break the neckline for some bizarre reason, then you're only going to be forming an inverse head and shoulders. Like, doesn't really matter if you break the the neckline of Adam and Eve because you're still forming some kind of higher time frame bullish bottoming pattern. That's what we're in the process of creating right now on on TRVL. A higher, this is the monthly time frame. And look at that. It's uh, it's looking very bottomy, bottom bottomy. <laughs> All right, I, I don't really have anything more to say except that I went to the Berlin ITB yesterday and that was fun. <laughs> so to show you some pictures, have a look. If anyone know, doesn't know what the ITB is, um, it's the largest, it's the largest uh, travel trade show and uh, D travel were out there in force. Well, <laughs> me and my brother supporting Cynthia. So this is it, the ITB. And I watched Cynthia, who's the CEO of of uh, D Travel. This is her. She was these this two gentlemen. This is a professor from Vienna, and this guy is a big shot investor in the travel industry. I can't. I don't know their names. Sorry. And my brother and me, and uh, we went to. 
we went to see her speak live and i tried my best to live stream it <laughs> and but it was really bad quality if you want to see that for some reason the sound quality is bad there so i just did it on my phone it was just literally off the cuff um, you'd have to turn your volume up because i tried to i tried to listen to it yesterday and it wasn't easy here it is understanding web three's potential for the travel industry by by cynthia so if you fancy once and for all for the travel industry so welcome on stage cynthia Wong. This is about this time is where my phone drops. <laughs> oh, it's so hard to hear, guys. Sorry. I apologize. I tried. And I need to start with explaining how Web2 works. Here she's demonstrating the AI Sensei, the, the vid mock up. And then there was a panel with those two gentlemen the, the professor and the big shot investor. Again, the sound is really poor. Sorry, it was very interesting. They had, they had a lot of good feedback uh, and comments, actually. And they were both very bullish on uh, on Web3 and D-Travel, basically. They were very interested. And afterwards, they were like, I was telling them about the token price. And they were like, okay, I'm going to go home and buy some. So I told you, whales are buying. And at the end, you can see the audience. Hold on, I think I turned my camera. <laughs> you want to dance? I appreciate that a lot. Yes. I hope to see you again next year on stage. Thank you so much again for being here with us. Thank you very much. See that? That's quite a good crowd. Not a bad audience. Wonderful. Thank I tell you, Cynthia did a really, really, really good job. I can't fault her at all. And she made a good presentation very easy to understand very simple very clear and very good representation for d travel uh, great thing about the itb is you've got a lot of big players there and my brother and i we're going to go now we're making connections and um with uh, other software companies and software developers and channel managers and so what we're trying to do now is we're trying to create partnerships for the night protocol basically that's really what our objective is and has been yesterday and today we're going to continue that endeavor and the great thing is that as we tell people and talk to people they're very interested and so it's quite a it's quite a busy show there's a lot of travel agencies and travel operators from all all of the world here it's really busy I also saw the Camino crowd. Um, they were quite a delightful bunch. And we had some beers with them. The Camino network. Yeah, we went to their... Was that the, yeah, this is their stand. We went to their stand. And uh, it was quite interesting. I didn't I didn't hear their talk though. If I knew I would have gone. This is their stand. <laughs> right, uh that's the uh TRVL stuff. Um there was some actually interesting uh, information in the Telegram. Let me just quickly bring it up, just in case people don't um, have access to that. Not all the information is posted. 
Um, just have a look. There it is. You see that? Oh, there's a lot of people chatting. All right. So actually, it was Eric that posted something yesterday, and I just want to kind of bring it up. Um, let me see if I can find it. Eric posted a couple of interesting things. <laughs> Uh, so let me just try and find it. Okay, here it is. No, no. Yeah, this is one of them. But let me just skip on that one because that wasn't the most interesting thing. The most interesting... Oh, here's Cynthia as well chatting. I don't know if you can see that. So going back to this concept of blockchain, imagine all these travel companies within the industry built on a blockchain. That means that all the data that they have is interoperable across all companies. And so... All right, maybe not. Uh, let me have a look. Let's see if I can find Derek. Search. It's not easy to search for messages in. <laughs> Telegraph, sorry. I definitely saw it. All right, let me go to this one anyway, no problems. Um, so there's a there's a there's some kind of uh, game going on about the uh, affiliates link, uh, and at the moment, uh, Eric is saying. That on the affiliates link, um, there's a there's a leaderboard. <laughs> I'm in the lead, and then it's Ronnie Sidhu, and then it's a three way tie among D travel hosts with Suzo three with the highest conversion rate of twenty percent. So there's a little bit of a competition going on here on the affiliation links on the referrals, and uh, it looks like I'm in the lead at the moment. So <laughs> if you're interested in getting involved. It's a friendly competition between us, seeing who can get as many affiliates as possible. And the, the great thing about the affiliation scheme is that in the future, if uh, operators get bookings, then the affiliates will get one and a half percent of of the the transaction fee. So there is incentive for that. So I do, I do recommend people uh, apply and participate and just share out deed your ref referral link and if people put their booking on d travel then that's a win it's a win for everyone and then the other thing that i was looking on was the stats and the stats here eric posted them i just want to try and find them there they are here it is so year on year february reservations plus 983 percent Room nights, 4,050%. Gross bookings, 3,300%. Host signups, 82%. So that's pretty good uh, uh, growth. Now, obviously, the numbers are probably quite small. So you could argue that the numbers are throwaway numbers, but you know. This you have to grow from somewhere. You have to grow from zero, and this is really strong, powerful growth num percentages. And so we have to see how that how that develops. And if anyone's been paying attention to the Telegram, you'll see that we do get that direct booking site activated, booking process operator signs up, sign ups. We're getting a lot of activity, and the community members has increased all of a sudden getting a lot of growth and this is really exciting because this is this is actually reflecting in the price i think at the price what we are seeing is a little bit of reflection in the growth of the community and the interest in the token 
So the more and more people become interested in the token, the more and more increase in value we're going to start seeing in the price of the token. So this is quite interesting and quite exciting for all of us. All right, any questions? I can quickly have a look at some things. 